I, I think one of the first questions that come up is uh, the, the time frame. How, how long, what's the, and, and I think, again, some of the comments we've already alluded to, but from, from your perspective, what, what do you think is, the, is, the, is an effective time frame for planning the succession in, in your particular businesses? Sure, if you guys just want to, yeah. Um, of course, we're at my point of the smallest, and I'm one of the smallest businesses up here. Um, it took John <coughs> Cross probably five years before I knew that he was the right guy. Uh, I think that um, it, it's going to take years to, uh, to groom the right person for succession. Uh, I think uh, that person has to be exposed to a lot of inputs, financial, sales, uh, somewhat technical about the products that, that you're making uh, and also get involved in, uh, let's say, the, like the American Gear Manufacturers Association. I've been a member since 1962, so I've been around a little bit. <clears throat> but um, I think, it, I think in, in the neighborhood of five years, if I had to pick a, a number, mm -hmm. that's, that's my thought about things. I, I think it's kind of like a cascading scale. Senior management, I probably agree that that's probably a, a good number. I have written down in my notes a minimum of two years. Uh, we have, uh, we're going through that transition today. We have uh, some senior management uh, that, uh, again, we're an ESOP. We have some 409P issues, and uh, if you get close to that, you lose some of your tax exempt status being an S type corporation, which we are. Uh, we need to be managing that uh, actively. Each and every year we're looking at what those numbers are, who's retiring, how many shares are being taken out of our plan, uh, what percentages of that ownership that's in the disqualified area. And so, you know, I, we've already got that plan in place for who's taking over from when our senior management, or our CEO and president stepping down. Uh, we have another key individual stepping down. We have those folks in place and they're working under their wings at this point in time and have been for a couple of years and it's probably going to be a couple more years until that uh, transition takes place. But as we move down the scale and, and, and some of the other positions that we have, we're still planning for succession, but it may not necessarily be that long of a term, maybe you know, 18 months. And just to go through a cycle, we recently went through somebody in our finance department that worked uh, about a year. With a, with a particular person to understand, go through a whole season of cycles to understand what was going on, and that was a very successful trans, uh, transition. Well, my experience is a bit different than you folks and a different answer, too. The transition process goes on every day, as I said, from day one. And by putting a team in place, when we hired the president, it took one day for, to transition. And, my belief is if you have a good manager and a president CEO that can run a company, and we're highly technical, we're highly technical and uh, specialized and not something you get trained in in most schools, it's getting better. You come in and step in, it's an ongoing business. It has business units, it has uh, groups and positions, and you step in and ran it. I walked across the driveway to another building, and uh, you know, we had meeting so my feeling is you set it up you set up uh, your operations and your people you have the right very very strong people for example CFO head of uh, uh, sales and marketing and engineering and stuff and the president there is to run the business as a business so for that transition it took me uh, a day after we hired somebody which took a while to find the right person I took over the business from an operations standpoint 12 months before. So Mark, your point, one season, right, what we did. Yeah. So um, that, that was valuable for me, but for not just for me, I guess, for the organization as well, right? Preparing the organization, understanding what was coming so that when we pulled the trigger in the end, finally, there was no real surprises. And, you know, I hadn't run it into the rocks in that first 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think from just the comments that there is no perfect answer to what the time frame is. It's going to be different, I think, for for every organization. The only other comment that I might that I might add to to, to what the, the our, our group has mentioned is simply that I think you do have to consider false starts in, in in the process, and that is that if you've got folks in place in a succession plan. Um, you know, you're going to encounter situations. I think one of the gentlemen mentioned it that, you know, either you'll find that somebody is not really developing 
or coming along as you would expect, and so they're not going to be the right selection for that particular situation. Or uh, the other side of things is that they decide that it's not a right fit for them, and they've got an opportunity to move into a different situation. So you, I think you do have to plan for, for false starts in that process. Bill? Yeah, let me just throw something in. One of the mistakes I think we make, and I made in times past, is putting your hopes and ambitions on somebody else that doesn't have <coughs> the skill set and the abilities. And we went through, you know, from when I was young in, in the early days, I was 30 years old when I bought the company. And so you look and say, well, so-and-so who's a general manager can become and, and leave it. No, he's not even a good general manager. Mm -hmm. And because that's what you want for him or her, and it doesn't work. And so that's one of the, if you say false starts, you know, whatever, if, if you go through it. so. You really, really got to be objective. Right, right. 